I'm Idiotech and this is my review of Aragami for PC. The game retails for 20 US dollars and is brought to you by Lintzworks, a small independent studio. So what is Aragami? Well, you play as a stealth ninja assassin badass dude who's been summoned by some girl in the game who needs your help. Your goal is to collect talismans and to kill some of her enemies and to save the kingdom essentially. The gameplay is wonderful. When you're in the shadows, enemies can't see you. You also recharge energy, which you can use to teleport to other shadows. It's a really nice way to traverse the game. Unlike a game like Dishonored, where you can just blink anywhere you like, the game is very much designed to allow you to go to certain areas and to not allow you to go to certain areas. Now you can also paint shadows onto the ground where there are no shadows, which allow you to access areas you wouldn't always be able to access, and it allows you to flank enemies and get behind them and then take them out. Those systems are incredibly satisfying. On top of that, we can enhance certain abilities, we can mark targets, we can get a shadow demon that restores certain points to our energy meter so that we can do other abilities like throw ninja stars or set traps or go invisible for a short period of time. There are a number of mechanics in this game, but the core loop mechanic, which is teleport to the shadow, teleport to the shadow, teleport behind an enemy, kill the enemy and move on, is incredibly satisfying. The reason for that is because of the speed, because of the animation quality, because of the art quality, because of the killer animations, which are absolutely wonderful and remind me very much of Tenchu's Stealth Assassins, a game I absolutely loved during my childhood, came out on PS1 in the early 2000s, and Aragami is very much a spiritual successor to Tenchu, at least in my opinion. It borrows heavily from the mechanics of that game, and it changes it up by adding some modern systems you've seen in other games like Dishonored and Mark of the Ninja. It's an excellent stealth game, and that is really all you need to know. I have very few complaints about this game, really. It is a very challenging game, however. So if you're the kind of person who's grown up on modern stealth games, and you like the idea of breaking out of stealth, killing 20 people, and then going back into stealth without consequences, you're going to have a rough time with this game because it punishes that type of play. If you're spotted, you die. If you leave an enemy on the ground, someone will find it and alert the entire base and you will die. It's very hard to avoid death in this game once you have been spotted, once the enemies are alerted. You have to play this smart. You have to think about what you're going to do and you have to time things well. And in my opinion, that's how a stealth game should be. If I want to play a third person action game, I'll go play a third person action game. When I play a stealth game, I want to play stealth. Now in this game, you can kill your enemies or you can play as a ghost. You get rewarded with ranks for this. It has a ranking system, a Japanese ranking system with S rank being the best rank. In order to achieve that rank, you basically have to not be detected throughout the mission. You can also gain points for hiding corpses. You gain points for stealth kills, for aerial kills, kills with your throwing star, things like that, trap kills, whatever you've chosen to spec into. Now, while I'm on the subject of mechanics and the various skills you have, the way it works is this. You have an upgrade tree. You can earn points and spend them wherever you like, depending on your playstyle, just like many modern games. The difference here is that they force you to go out of your way to earn the upgrade points. Unlike a modern game that may just drip feed you XP and then eventually you can get everything unlocked, this game requires you to pick up scrolls and scrolls are not on the standard path from A to B. If you just go through this game, a to B, A to B, easiest path, path of least resistance, you're not going to get that many upgrades. The upgrades come when you explore, when you go off the beaten path and you explore nooks and crannies in the map design, you will find scrolls and they will allow you to upgrade your character, which is wonderful. It's a great way to encourage exploration, but it doesn't mean that you have to do it. If you want to play the game on hard mode, essentially, and not have any abilities, then you can push through it and speed run it as fast as you like. It rewards different types of playstyles and I really enjoy it. It also allows you to choose your difficulty, so to speak, by not having certain abilities available to you. So I think that's a wonderful system. Let's talk about the art style. It's simplistic, it's clean, it's cell shaded in certain ways, but it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. It does a wonderful job of recreating that, that aesthetic you might expect from a feudal Japanese setting. It does a great job. The animations are stellar, really reminiscent of Tenchu Stealth Assassins, for its time, Tenchu was quite brutal and the kill animations were very exciting, and the same can be said here. The sound design is great, all the voice acting is in Japanese, and the game is subtitled, which I really like. Again, it adds to the authenticity of the experience, and the music is very traditional Japanese as well. 
It's wonderful from a production standpoint, and from a gameplay standpoint, it's one of the best stealth games I've ever played. Now it is incredibly punishing. If you're the kind of gamer who likes a casual experience and doesn't like dying over and over and over again, you're gonna find this game frustrating because it is very difficult. The checkpoint system in this game is also incredibly brutal. You will have to repeat large portions of content sometimes if you die, and as you progress throughout the game, it gets harder and harder, levels get longer and longer, and checkpoints get fewer and further between. That can lead to repeating content, and that can be frustrating. So the balance in a game like this is always gonna be hard. Balancing that frustration versus fun is gonna be different for different people. For me, there were times when I got frustrated, but the overall experience was good enough for me to continue pushing through those and then get that satisfying reward when I finally beat the level. For other people, it's gonna to be too challenging and it's gonna put them off. And for other people, it will probably be too easy for them. So it's difficult really to critique it. It's a balanced thing and it will be based pretty much on the kind of person you are and what you kind of like. Now, one major criticism I do have of the game, and it's pretty much the only one I do have, is that there are a few bugs and they are game breaking to a degree. So you might hit a checkpoint. There's an objective, you have to clear out a temple, you do it, and then you die just afterwards. Now the game won't recognize that you need to go back and redo that part of the level and will just tell you to progress to the next part. By the time you get to the end of the level, you won't actually be able to complete it because you didn't complete the thing that it thinks you've completed. It's hard to explain, but trust me, it's incredibly frustrating. I'm pretty sure the developer will be aware of it by now because it's happened to a number of people. It happened to a couple of people playing in my Discord last night. It happened to me twice. It's very annoying and it kind of, if you don't know what's happening to you, you may be forced to restart the level. And so I really hope they fix those bugs because without them, it's one of the best stealth games I have ever played. Now, before we end the review, I saw a couple of people talking about performance and this game having performance issues. In my case, that wasn't at all what was happening. I was getting 120, 140 FPS most of the time. I never dropped below 60 in my entire time playing the game. And I've got a good 10 plus hours in the game at this point. So I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm running a 980 and I'm running a 5820K. So I don't know what it is. My CPU certainly wasn't being used at all really during the game and my GPU was being maxed out at all times and it was getting around 120 FPS most of the time at 1080p. So I'm not really sure what's happening there. It must be certain people have some strange configuration issues because for me and all of the people playing on my Discord, we all had perfect performance throughout the entire game. So I just wanted to point that out because I saw a couple of people raising concerns about this game's performance as maybe a reason not to pick it up. And for me at least, and all the people I've been playing with in Discord, it's wonderful and I haven't had any issues at all with performance. Another thing I should talk about briefly is the multiplayer. You can play the entire story all the way through with a friend, which is a really nice system. Now the implementation of multiplayer isn't the best. You can invite someone to your group. It works, but finding public games is kind of hard and you just use a basic matchmaking system. You end up with a random person and there's no chat mechanics in there, so you can't really communicate with them well. There's no way to ping certain targets to tell your friend to go kill those people. So they could have implemented some systems there to better the communication of multiplayer, but it's really fun actually playing with another person to take out guys simultaneously. That's very satisfying. So if you do have a friend picking up the game, I would encourage you to check out the uh, co-op multiplayer of the story as well. It's certainly worth your time. So not that many negative things to say about Aragami. It really is one of the best stealth games I've ever played. It's beautiful. It sounds great. The voice acting is wonderful. It has an authentic Japanese feel. It takes me back to my childhood when I played games like Tenchu Stealth Assassins, like Thief, games that used to punish you for not being stealthy. That's what this game does. It does a great job of it. And it's a wonderful stealth experience. If you like stealth games, I strongly encourage you to pick this up. If you're someone who doesn't like punishing games, however, you will get frustrated, it will be challenging, but if you push through that, it's really seriously rewarding. And the art, the sound, the animations makes it all the more enjoyable. So, it's a strong recommendation from me. If you do wanna pick up this game, I now have a Green Man Gaming affiliate link. You can click it below, it will take you to Green Man Gaming. If you sign in, you get a 20% discount. I get a 2% commission. So, if you can't help the channel out in other ways like Patreon or donations, and you do wanna support me, that's a good way for you to do it. I get a little bit of cash, you get some cheap games, everyone's happy. Otherwise, if you wanna support me on Patreon, you can do that. You'll find a link in the description box below. 
And if you can't do any of those things, just keep watching my videos, drop me a like, maybe share it with your friends. It helps a ton. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. It really means a lot to me that people enjoy my videos. I will see you guys next time.